Good morning and welcome to another keyboard, beginning keyboard class. And uh, for some reason we didn't get standing in the need of prayer when I played it at the end of our last session. And so we're going to begin with that. I'm just going to play it so we can hear what that sounds like. Now, the first keyboard that I was starting our lessons with was uh, one of the basic keyboards that we have here and I was unhappy with it so I brought one of my own that has a touch to it but I'm not happy with that one either and so I just brought in my Casio and um, this is a full keyboard 88 keys has a nice touch even the keys themselves has a nice touch and it has a nice um, touch when you for loud and soft it's just it's wonderful anyway so I toted that down here today so that we would have the best quality sound that I can provide so <clears throat> the, the real challenge of this particular piece is down starting in the third line when you're going with your eighth notes right you're going from E to uh, D sharp and then you've got your C chord down here and so it goes okay so that part <coughs> excuse me is can be a little challenging in the very beginning when you're just getting going and so what I've done and what I'm going to do today is if you look at the full piece you do the all four lines then you go back and where it says fine at the end of the second line that's where you finish but because it's good practice for me when I first started playing this that I go through the whole thing again and so uh, call it artistic license call it whatever you want sometimes a piece will have a repeat sign at the end and maybe you don't want to do that so that's up to you but in this case it's for me it was good practice in the beginning and I've just kind of um, made a habit of doing it that way just because I like that interesting uh, sound down there when he talks about not my brother not my sister so anyway so here we go oh so rhythmically and not too fast and sometimes I even have a tendency it just because it's so it's so fun to play <laughs> I get going and I I forget to uh, slow it down just a little bit so Okay, so one of the other things that I want to get into is the counting as we're now getting into um, the eighth notes. So in the past, you know, you would, let's say we're in 4-4 time and you've got four quarter notes, you would go one, two, three, four, 
If it was three, four time, you go one, two, three. But because of the addition of uh, eighth notes, which, right, there's two eighth notes that equals one quarter note, you have to figure out a way to count that. And so this is where the and comes in. So, for example, <clears throat> if I was counting three, four time, three quarter notes, instead of going one, two, three, I could go one and two and three and, one and two and three and four and. So, when you get to the eighth notes then, instead of one and two and three and, it could be one and two and three and, or it could be any combination thereof. So if you look on page 76, where it talks about the four count, you've got a quarter note, two eighth notes, a quarter note, and two eighth notes. So you could be counted one and two and three and four and, you see? So that and allows you the full length of the quarter note, one and, and then the eighth notes, one and, two and, you see? So anyway, we're going to get into that here after we do this first exercise. Now we're going to do exercise number one, and um, this is good exercise. Uh, for finger dexterity. And so in this very first exercise, we're going to begin with the treble clef. And instead of going C, D, E, F, G, we're going to skip D. And with our second finger, we're going to go C, E, F, G, A. Okay? And that will be the pattern. So. So you come back to E, which is where your second finger, you went from C to E, right? C to E, C, E, F, G, A, G, F, E. And then your first finger, which is your thumb, of course, but your first finger is D next and then up to F. So you're, you're skipping, you know, one white key um, each time, so the pattern stays the same. So it's D, F, G, A, B, C, G, uh, wait a minute, uh, D, F, G, A, B, A, G, F, and then you're going to start again with the E. Okay, so that's the, the right hand. The left hand, you're uh, going from C with your little finger, which is number five, C, and then E with your fourth finger, F, G, A. Pattern is the same. You're just skipping that one key. And then you do both hands together. Okay, and then um, if you look on the third line, we're going to start with G up here, and then you skip one going down. So you go into E, D, C, B. So the key 
This one is a lot simpler than some of the other ones, which we'll do at another time. But, and so uh, starting with your left hand, if you look here, you've got C, E, G, G again, so. But I'm gonna start here because this is where we're at. So then, if I go G here and G here, So basically, so that's going up and that's coming down. And so if you'll practice that, I know a lot of people don't like doing those kinds of exercises and that's fine, but anyone who does, it's gonna to be to your benefit because the finger dexterity, because as we're moving along in this book, that's one of the things that I like about this book as a beginning book, that they progressively get more and more challenging. Just like right now, we're going into dotted uh, quarter notes and dotted half notes and uh, all kinds of things. And so um, what we want to do is by utilizing that way we I was showing you how to count with the and, that allows us the opportunity to see how long a particular note is as well as being able to get those notes that are in between, your eighth notes, for example. So what a dotted note does is it adds half the value to a note. So if you have, a, if you look at the very beginning there, you have a half note and a quarter note, which equals uh, three beats or a dotted half note. So the dot gives a note half its value. So if it's a, a, a half note and it has a, a two beats, you add a half a beat, which is one beat, and you have three counts. And so when you look at a dotted quarter note, that half is an eighth, is an eighth note. So what you have is a one and two. What? One and two. It's a one and a half, right? One and is one, right? One and two, just that eighth note after the full uh, range of quarter note, which is one and, right? So one and two is a dotted quarter note. So if you look down below there then, you're counting what is happening here is your quarter note and the first eighth note are tied together. So you, they're held, right? So you've got one and two and three and four and so I know it's, uh, it's a little challenging, it's a little complicated, but the only difference in the one down below it is the way that it is uh, written, but it counts the same way. So we have a dotted quarter note, one and two, right? And three and four and, you see? So, um, I know it's, uh, it's challenging, it's mathematical, and for some people, you know, math is a real challenge, but um, it's important to work on it to the point where you, you understand it so that, um, you can play a piece of music the way that it's written and later, we're using your artistic license, play it the way you want. But 
be able to play it the way that it's written is uh, part of what we're learning right now. So we're going to go to page 81 and we're going to try to so <clears throat> the first line in position C we're starting with an F but first we're going to count it okay so we have a quarter note dotted quarter note so it's one and two and then your eighth note on G will be so one and two and three and okay so three and being the full length of that quarter note three and then in the second measure we have three beats because we have a dotted half note so one and two and three and and we go to the next measure one and two and three and and then finally one and two and three and okay so playing it we got a g or excuse me an f here and a g f and d okay so does that sound familiar silent night so one and two and three and four and oh wait this is three three four times so see how easy it is to get confused <laughs> okay so let's try it again starting on f one and two and three and four are ka okay one and two and three and 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 see how that goes so one more time one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and oh, wait a minute so on the third measure one and two and three and one and two and three and okay so one more time one and two and three and 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 okay so now the next one decks the halls so you have one and two and three and four and now we're in four four time second measure one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay so once again one and two and three and four and 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 see how that is so now we've got on g here okay so one and two and three and four oh wait a minute yeah this is four four time so one and two and three and four and 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 okay again one and two and three and four and 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 okay and now the last one <coughs> it starts with 
it's the four, four times, so it starts, the first measure is four and, right? Four and. And the second measure, you have four beats, so you have one and two and three and four and. But in the last measure, you only have three beats. So one and two and three and, okay? So again, four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and, okay? So that will be, let's see, we're gonna start here in G, see here, so one and, oh wait, that's, uh, excuse me, four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and one, uh, four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and, okay? And then the last one, <coughs> uh, here comes the bride, so it's, we're in four, four times, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So, with number one thumb on C, one and two and three and four and one and, uh, wait a minute here, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, whoops, one and two and three and four and you get focused on the counting and you forget where you're going here <laughs> so okay so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now, it will take a while for you to really get this, but the key is that um, when you, as we're moving forward, there, you're going to be um, playing a lot of dotted notes and eighth notes and different things. And so, um, if you can practice that every day, it's uh, a big help. Just like practicing reading, I, I emphasize that every lesson, but the key is, if you practice reading every day, and if you practice this counting before it gets even more complicated, if you can understand it from where we are right now, um, it'll be a lot easier as we go into more challenging things. So, so uh, the last song that we're gonna be doing today will be Alouetta, and I'm sure that you've heard this. It's an old French folk song. And um, it's C here, C here, and then okay. So, <clears throat> so uh, we could count this uh, starting with the first measure. We'll do a little counting. So one, two, three. Uh, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and, uh, that's not right. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and rest, four and. 
1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, so down to the next line, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and then going down to the base on the th second measure on the second line, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, back up to the treble clef, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, next line, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, last line, 1 and 2 and 3 and rest and, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, finally, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So by doing that to beginning, it will help you uh, when you get ready to play. So basically, this is the way it sounds. So. loud and they're soft and but I'm going to play it to pretty much the same so that you can hear the whole thing again so it'll go When you get to the third line, that second measure, which goes there's no indication that you are holding those quarter notes a lot longer than you normally do. And the only reason I know that is my, one of my instructors, when we were learning this, that was the uh, way that she explained that it should be played. And when you, most of us have heard that song, and so when you think back of that song, that's what you remember is there's a big space uh, in between each one of them. They're held a lot longer, so. Next time we'll be looking at intervals, and so if you take a look at these intervals, because normally up until now we've had uh, seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths, now we're going to be going into sixths. So if you look at the next page, page 83, what you have is in the uh, treble clef, you got your C and your D, your C and E, C and F, C and G. So that's, now we're going to stretch up one from C to A. That's your sixth. So, so and in the left hand it's, oh, excuse me we're doing, okay, so one is melodic and this is harmonic, so it's thirds, fourths, 
fifths and sixths. So doing the same with the left hand, so five and four, five and three, five and two, five and one, and then five and one again as you stretch. So and sixth. So that's what we'll be going into next time as we um, move up in terms of the intervals. It'll be sixth, sevenths, and eighths as we move right along. So um, anyway, um, that'll be our lesson for today. And uh, I want to thank you for joining me and happy playing. Yeah.